You are Locked On Auburn, your daily podcast on the Auburn Tigers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, welcome on into Locked On Auburn, your daily Auburn Tigers podcast. I'm your host, Zach Blackerby, and joining us as he does every Friday for a Ferg Friday, Justin Ferguson with the Auburn Observer. How are you, my friend? I'm all right, man. How are you? I'm good. I am good. So, um... I, I'm kind of done talking about Penn State, but your opinion's very important. I just kind of want a quick response. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure you're tired of writing about it and talking about it as well, so we can kind of look ahead. But uh, is there a big concern, you think, about the performance Saturday night as far as the scheme and the coaching and the the how they lost on Saturday? Yeah, I, I was asked in my mailbag on Friday what the big concern was for me. I, I think long-term, it's probably the pass rush just because it was an issue we saw last year, rushing with four you know, in the Kevin Steele defense, they weren't able to get home consistently. And that was part of the reason why they had a hard time uh, getting off the field on third down. Now I do think it's interesting that Auburn had a decent third down defense against Penn state. They were able to get some stops. I mean, think about it this way. A lot of talk has been about, Oh, Auburn's defense had a really tough game at Penn state. However, Penn state only scored 28 points. And one of those touchdowns was on a short field. So like, it's not like this is a broken defense or they, you know, uh, that, it's, it's a bad defense by any means, uh, but I, I do wonder how are they going to find a way to get to the quarterback uh, more regularly? That's got to be the big thing because you can get tighter in the secondary, and I'm sure they're going to do some tweaks and change some things up uh, to, to get better in that aspect. But um, if you're not getting pressure on the quarterback, it's a hard, it's hard to do much of anything in pass defense. I mean, I think that is – I think being able to – to win and get a consistent pass rush with four guys for the most part is the one of the most important things you can do in football sure. uh, because it flips the numbers game and it and it gives you more bodies in the toughest part of the game which is covering the pass with yeah. the way football is and the way the rules are so uh, that's the one thing i'm thinking like eh, maybe I, I think the wide receiver is gonna i mean there's time for those guys to get better and grow i think Bo showed some good things and he's got to get better in some areas thought the running game was obviously great they, they right. stopped the run Pass rush though, can they can they get home more consistently? Just because this is a recurring problem from last season, and uh, but again, there's still plenty of time. It's the third game in a new scheme. Well, Jay Ferg, a big narrative following that game is okay. Well, Derek Mason didn't really adjust. He didn't really adapt. He didn't really send more guys. Yeah. One, one, do you believe that narrative is true? And two, if it is, why do you think it is? They. They didn't change a ton, and, and and I think one of the big things to to keep in mind of this game is that if you go back and watch the pass defense, the problem wasn't necessarily the biggest problem wasn't necessarily that they were giving up a lot of completions. I mean, completion rate can be an empty stat if they're short passes, right? And if yeah. you're keeping things in front of you and you're getting off the field on third down, the problem was is they had too many busted coverages that went into big plays. And that's what killed Wisconsin against Penn State, and it's what killed Auburn against Penn State. So I think there is just that, you know, there was some of what they were doing that was working that the big plays just came back and got them, right? Mm -hmm. And it's the ones the tight ends where guys were running free. Right. So this whole playback, keep everything in front of you, don't blitz as much, it, it, it can work. And it worked, you know, on several drives in that game. The issue, though, is just, just those big plays start to just warp the sense of, okay, well, nothing worked in this game, or the pass defense was was really, really bad. I think you take out those plays where Auburn get, get left dudes wide open, you're talking about a completely different performance to the pass game. The completion percentage is still high, but it's one that you can live with if you're keeping everything in front of you and preventing big plays. The, the whole thing about the Kevin, the, ooh, I almost said Kevin Steele, the Derek Mason defense <laughs> yeah. is it's a top down defense. Keep everything in front of you. Don't give up the big plays. And in modern football, that's a great strategy to have. But you got to make sure you don't give up the big plays on things that you can control, right? If, you know, dude makes a really good play in one-on-one -on -one coverage and beats you, that's one thing. But if a dude's going uncovered and going 30 or 40 yards, it's a completely different thing. And there was too many times Auburn gave up either touchdowns or big plays to guys that were running wide open. So if they tighten that up, you the numbers may not look always pretty, but it might get it might be effective in limiting big, uh, you know, good teams from big plays and, and winning, winning football. Do you think it's weird at all? And I mean, scheme is scheme and coaches, especially when you have as much experience as Derek Mason does at both the coordinator and head coach level, you're probably pretty much married to a certain philosophy at some point. And there's nothing wrong with that. 
but it, it he seems pretty married to the zone. I think that's kind of what we're going to see moving forward. But when you look at the strength of Auburn's defensive backfield, based on what we've seen in previous years, they're better in man. Do you mm -hmm. think that that's a, a, a good decision, a bad decision? Do you think it, it does it even really matter uh, after you kind of get a get it kind of a, a little more comfort and communication on the back end of this defense? Yeah, I think they could play more man moving forward. And they played a decent amount of man on Saturday against Penn State. It's just off man, so it looks different, right? When when, when yeah. we have this thought in, in our heads of man, especially from the Auburn defense last few years, it's get like, right up on them. It's, it's up press. and run stuff, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's press right. man coverage. There's a lot you go back and look. It looks like zone because they're playing off ball. But guys are sticking with one dude, right? And, and and so that's something that I think that's an adjustment. And I think when you look back, some of the big plays Auburn gave up on Saturday, guys were coming up, uh, you know, coming through uncovered in zone. You know, there were a couple of times where man, guys just didn't didn't line up in the right assignment. There was miscommunication and stuff like that. Um, but the thing about the Derek Mason defense, and as someone who has tried to study it as much as he, as I can this year is right. he is a truly multi like just as much as brian harson and mike bobo are on offense he's a truly multiple guy it's three down it's four down it's man it's zone it's wanting you to be ready for anything but i do think early on it might be one of those things where you see auburn play a little bit more man just because these guys especially the experienced guys are a little bit more familiar with it right they you know nehemiah pritchett is a great man cover corner and that might be one of those things where you may rely on that on the outside a little bit more moving forward, but I, you know, things are kind of changing up and doing, doing a variety of things. You'll see them, you know, go man on one side zone on the other. Like it's, you know, they change things up and it's, it's a complex defense. And I think it might be something that they do more of moving forward, especially if they want right. to get this completion percentage down, but they've got another thing, you know, they, they got to do is you can play off man coverage and you can play zone and you can be a lot more disruptive through the air and stick better in coverage. Uh, and that's something I think they got to work on and without necessarily changing who they want to be in, in terms of their identity. Right. Uh, Jay, for somebody asked in the Locked on Auburn Discord, um, a question for you. Uh, ben Jay asks, how similar slash different was the defensive scheme that Mason ran against Penn State as he used at Stanford? Chances on adjustments being made or sticking to what has been successful for him by hoping for a better uh, version of execution. You kind of touched on that a little bit, but mm -hmm. I mean, it's just pretty much just what we've seen him always do. Yeah, and it's and it's a truly multiple defense. I think you saw yeah. some the guys are a little bit more backed off. You see the linebackers playing a little bit deeper as well. And look, run defense. Auburn's got it right now. They are they are playing really really well in run defense. Um, so it's just that kind of backed up a little bit, keep everything in front of you. It, it is that, but you've seen his defenses kind of evolve and change over time and i think part of it is is just a good defensive coordinator a good coordinator a good coach period looks at their personnel and says okay does what i do do what i do uh does what i do on offense or defense and our scheme and our playbook what do we have in it that plays the best in these situations and i think they're still learning that i think they're still learning what that looks like it's one thing to go through that in this in practices it's a completely different thing to go through that in a game. And it's a completely different thing to go through that in a game when the other team is not bad, like Alabama State and Akron are, comparatively speaking. Sure. So I think there's a lot of learning that they did in that game. And I think this is where you're going to start seeing the the adapting and the tweaks and the changes moving forward. I I would I would tell Auburn fans basically don't think that this is going to be a rigid philosophy and no one's going to adapt and no one's going to change because of one performance. Um, one, Mason's a very well-respected defensive coordinator who has done a lot over the years. But number two, his scheme is pretty adaptable. They will do a lot of different things uh, up front and in the back. And so I, I, I wonder how much of that we'll see, you know, starting with the Georgia State game this week. Right. Today's show brought to you by our friends at Built Bar, the best-tasting protein bar Ever ton of different flavors ranging from raspberry, mint brownie, double chocolate, salted caramel. All these bars very high in protein, very low in calories and sugar. Your typical uh, macro breakdown: seventeen to, eight gram, uh, 17 to eighteen grams of protein, calories ranging from one hundred and thirty to one hundred and eighty per bar, and just four or five grams of sugar. Awesome stuff. They taste great too. Tastes like a candy bar. Go to built.com. Use promo code locked fifteen. And you'll get 15% off your order. Use promo code LOCK15 for 15% off at built.com.
Justin Ferguson, tell us uh, the latest of what's going on at the Auburn Observer and how folks can sign up. Yeah, we hit a thousand subscribers, which is Congrats. really really cool. Yeah, thank you. Uh, we we finally hit our thousand subscribers, and that was something that we've talked about. It was a far off goal. Hey, cool! It'd be one day if we did this, and yeah. we got to it really in less than a year since when we started, uh, you know, doing a uh, paid subscription. So that's really really awesome to see. Um, and you know, our our game weeks are kind of we're in a rhythm right now. So if you sign up at auburnobserver.com today, for example, you'd have gotten a mailbag answering a lot of questions about uh, the Penn State game and moving forward for Auburn. Over the weekend, Sunday morning, I'll have observations from the Georgia State game up on Sunday morning. Uh, we'll have a podcast recapping it later in the day. Then Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, you get newsletters. Mondays use our film room breakdown. Tuesday, Wednesday, keep that rolling uh, with what we learned and pushing ahead to the next week. Do a preview podcast on Thursday. Um, and uh, I think this one coming up, we're going to get somebody in there to, to talk LSU since that's going to be such a big game and, you know, keep it going until Friday with another mailbag. And you get all that for $6 a month or $60 for the full year. You sign up at auburnobserver.com. Uh, once you pay the subscription, put your email in there. We send it to you so you can read and listen on your own time. So you don't have to worry about going to the website ever again. You can just pay for it and be done with it, which, uh, which is pretty cool. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. Tried to give away a... Um a subscription to it last week. So we'll do that again this week, assuming that's cool with you. But the, yeah. the guy guessed the score prediction was 20. His, his was 27, 21 Penn state, which is wow really, really close, but uh, I never could get him to, to respond back to me. So uh, we'll try that again. If you, uh, yeah, if you want to enter a chance to win a subscription to the Auburn observer, go to uh, just go to the comment section. If you're listening on the podcast, head over to YouTube and, uh, and check it out and just comment your score prediction um, just like, comment, and subscribe to the video. And for a tiebreaker, we'll go with, uh, let's do just total passing yards by Bo Nix for Saturday against Georgia State. So we will do that. As far as this Georgia State team, uh, I've been trying to kind of figure out what Auburn can do on Saturday to make it look like they're progressing forward. And I don't yeah. really know if there's a whole lot. We talked with, um, we talked with, you know, uh, a Georgia State expert on the show yesterday, and he talked about how they run a lot of two tight end sets. That's something that Auburn struggled with against Penn State as far as covering the tight end and pass coverage. Maybe that's something, mm -hmm. but just uh, you know, the level of talent is just so different. Yeah, and Georgia State's running this like option kind of attack right now, uh, and so that's going to be something just a trickier little matchup for the for the run defense for Auburn. Um, they're just trying to find anything that works on offense. So I think for de defense, you know, you can say like, well, you got to bounce back in the passing game. Georgia State like couldn't complete anything against Charlotte last week. So right. yeah, it, it's gonna it's gonna look a lot different. And I think it'll be kind of a lower scoring affair just because I think Georgia State's gonna try to hold on to that ball and 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 run it. On the defensive side, you know, Georgia State's got one of the worst pass defenses in the country in terms of yards per play through the first few weeks of the season. Uh, I know Army doesn't throw the ball much, but when they did, they hit big plays off of it. Sure. Sam Howell had a big bounce back game against them uh, in week two for North Carolina. So this is a good opportunity to kind of get that back going again, a little bit more consistency. I, I don't know if it's necessarily improvement. I think the big thing I'm interested in seeing this week, especially on the wide receiver, is personnel, right? Is this going to be a game where you see more of the guys we haven't seen quite as much of in the first three weeks? Now, Javarius Johnson being one of them, because he was out in week two, play a limited role in week three. I still will keep saying it. I think a completely healthy Javarius Johnson changes the game for Auburn's passing attack. He has the best connection with Bo Nix. He's got a ton of upside. He's a big play type of speed guy, uh, and he does a lot of a lot of good stuff in the slot. Very good route runner. Um, but do we see more Xavion Capers? Do we see more uh, Malcolm Johnson Jr.? Do we see more Elijah Canyon? Do we see um, Tavares Dawson uh, is somebody uh, uh, to keep an eye on, um, I think, this this week because this is an opportunity. Like, you know, after this, you don't play another non-conference game. It is eight straight SEC ones after that. So these young guys, if this is going to be a chance for them to carve out a role, this is their best chance to jump on board here. Uh, and so how do they do that? How do they separate the targets, you know, move the ball around through the air? Because – I think it was very obvious one of the big differences from the Penn State in the Penn State game for Auburn is that Penn State has a couple of NFL wide receivers. Auburn hard to find those right now. Now those guys can get better and develop over time, 100%. No one's I'm not ruling out anybody for that team to, you know, go on and and play play for money someday. But 
you know, they were Penn State was a lot more established, and then that comfort level and that ability to get open and make big plays was was there more for Jahan Dotson and Parker Washington. And Auburn just doesn't have those go-to guys yet, especially if a guy like Javarius Johnson, who we think we have has a ton of upside, um, has been limited. So uh, yeah. that's the big thing I'm looking at is the wide receiver personnel and how that gets you know sorted out. Have you heard any updates on on a guy like um, on a guy like Javarius Johnson? So he played a little bit against a uh, Penn State, caught a got a really good third down ball. Um, but I think it's one of those things that's kind of kind of so. you know, slowly working him back in there that you know yes. uh, wouldn't be able to play the full full scope of it. So we'll see. I mean, you know the 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 injury report sounds a little bit better this week. Uh, Owen Papo um, is back at practice doing some things. I'll be interested if he plays or not uh, on what's Saturday. The point of- what's the point right. of tomorrow right exactly like you're set it's not like you're it's not like you're a wide receiver or an offensive lineman or even even in the secondary or pass rush where he's like well you need to get some more reps to try because we got to get this going inside linebacker you're set so it'll be right. interesting to see what they do with there but sean chavers back at practice you know and i think johnson working his way back up is is going to be big so I, i'll keep an eye on him on saturday for sure Sure. Uh, Tyler Doyle asking the Locked on Auburn Discord, what is the likelihood that we get two different 1,000-yard rushers this season? Mm, Okay, so this is a really good question. Uh, Off the top of my head, um, well, Tank is definitely in line for it. Um, Yeah, can Hunter get to 1,000? Right, and it's like, that's a tough question for me because I want to wait to see what the rotation looks like, A, with Sean Shivers back in the fold, right. and B, against SEC competition. Because, like, he teed off against Alabama State and Akron. And he had a really good a really good runs against uh, Penn State as well, but it was like eight, nine carries, ten carries. Is, is that what we're going to see from Hunter moving forward? Is that going to be kind of the workload for him? Um, does it go down? Does it even go up a little bit? And then you're playing against some really good teams coming up. So getting to 1,000 with him would be really, really tough. Um, but it's possible. I mean, it, it's definitely possible, and and I think Tank's in a Tank's in a great spot to do it. Is with three straight hundred yard games. Um, it's hard to have two thousand yard backs, and uh, but I, I'm not I'm not ruling it out because Hunter at least has that big playability where he might not need quite as many carries to get to that point. I mean, he had what he's at, he's number two in the country right now, I think, in yards per carry, and a lot of that's that big one he had against Alabama State. But still, that's even if you take it out, it's like nine point something. Right, exactly. So he's uh, he's a very very effective uh, you know runner, and and I think this is going to be the identity of this team moving forward. You know, that's the play calls in certain situations on Saturday that I know everybody's talked about over and over again. Maybe looking a little different moving forward when you put more of an emphasis on running the ball and being being more established in the, in that running game. Um, and, and you feel a lot better about that now because not only, have, you know, Tate Bisbee can do it, not only do you think your offensive line can hold it up, but now you've seen Jarquez Hunter do it against a really good opponent. Uh, right. And then, of course, having Chivers back in the fold makes it makes it even better. Absolutely. All right, uh, today's show brought to you by our friends at betonline.ag. They've read on their website. It looks clean and easy, even easier for you to place all of your sports wagers. Head over to their website and you get a 100% welcome bonus on that deposit. All you have to do is use promo code locked on. BetOnline.ag, your online sportsbook experts. All right, Jay, for we got a few more questions I'd love to hear your thoughts on. This is a big one. Uh, CJ asks, is a hot dog a sandwich or a taco and why? I don't eat hot dogs, so I, I abstain from that uh, from that discussion. I, le- I leave that to the experts. I don't want to... I don't want to speak on something of which I am not. I am not uh, fully I informed. I understand. Jay will ask, and he said he mentioned this in your um, in the Observer mailbag too. So if you don't want to answer this and want people to read it in the newsletter, that is totally fine. But with LSU officially being a night game, what's the likelihood that we walk into Death Valley and get the first win there since 1999? Read it in the mailbag. I did answer that one from Jordan. Okay. So you, All right. Uh, you can check. You can check that out in the mailbag. Uh, uh, here on uh, on Friday. Um, all right. DD and TD Stan account says, what is wrong with Elijah Canyon? That's a great question, man. Um, I, I don't know. I, it's nothing injury related uh, from, from what I can tell. It's just that, you know, 
since fall camp started, you heard more about Shedrick Jackson. You saw uh, Xavier Capers uh, play a little bit more in that split end spot. Yeah, and it's just kind of yeah. I don't I don't know what it is. I really I really don't. I, he's one of those guys that I think if Saturday we see more of him, maybe that's something something to keep an eye on moving forward. But at Canyon is uh, you know I I can't I can't really speak to what, what what's going on with with Canyon. I know there's a lot of options there, and they've had a tight rotation. Had a tight rotation against Penn State. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I think Saturday, the amount he plays or doesn't play, I think will be very telling for the rest of the season. Trilly B asked, is Auburn still the best team or the second best team in the West? I don't know if they ever were the second best team in the West, but you've got to put them behind Alabama. Obviously you would think A&M's ahead of them. I'd put Arkansas ahead of Auburn right now too. I, Arkansas looks better at the moment. Um, and they're more tested for sure. Ole Miss uh, is of Auburn right now too. Yeah, Ole Miss might have the best offense in America, and it's like, yeah, that's 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 tough. I think I think Auburn could beat a team like A and M, especially with their quarterback issues. I think Auburn can beat LSU. I think they can beat State. I think they beat Auburn. I mean, I they think I think they can beat Arkansas, and I think they can beat Ole Miss. Now, do I think they're going to sweep? No, but you know, somebody asked me in the mailbag this week: Do I feel different about Auburn's ceiling or their floor more? after the first three weeks. And I said, I think Auburn's ceiling has changed a little bit more because with A&M and LSU not looking quite as good, those are more gettable games in my mind than it was at the start of the season. Now, Georgia's awesome, and Alabama's going to be really good as, as always. But Alabama looks a little bit more susceptible, you know, especially with the way Florida ran the ball against them last week. I want to see how much that changes between now and the end of the season. But the floor hasn't changed for me because you've seen Arkansas and Ole Miss and even State at times look better than expected. So um, this is what's going to make this SEC slate really fun uh, for for Auburn. It's like could Auburn be the second best team in the West this year? Yeah, I think you know I think in matchups you can't rule that out. But like I also think they could finish towards the bottom because any one of those teams have the have the talent to beat them and the way they're looking early on. I think. We should wait and see until next weekend, obviously. But 100%. If Auburn goes down and looks bad and rusty still against LSU, I think we're going to go into full on panic mode because then it's like, I'm not confident Auburn can beat Georgia or Alabama. And then, like, I think AM's way better than LSU. I think Arkansas is mm -hmm. way better than LSU. I think oh, Ole Miss is way better than LSU. And it's like, oh my gosh, like, that's, yeah. that is like, Doom and gloom, worst case. Like we talked about worst case scenarios going into the season. It's like, dang, this really might be one. I just think LSU's a really bad football team. And if Auburn goes down there and can't beat them, then it's like you start asking the questions like, okay, what are we this season? Is it okay that we're at this point this season? Yeah. And then at that point, then at that point, you look at it and say, well, one game doesn't determine your fate. And especially just the SEC opener. I mean, how many times did Auburn look? not great in the first game or two under miles on first sec game or two and then turn it around. Yeah. But yeah, it does. When you start playing the what if and moving ahead game, like a lot would have to change for you to be better than some of those teams. And I think there's some of that year one runway where you can get, you know, there needs to be some patience and that it is going to be a team that you hopefully gets better as the season goes along. But LSU is a pretty gettable road game. The other thing, though, about that is is that LSU might be kind of a mess right now. Yeah. But it's still one of the most talented teams in the country in a place you haven't won in in 22 years. So right, it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough either way. Nichigo asks, who do we currently match up better against, Ole Miss or Alabama? Uh, Ole Miss. It, it, it's, yeah, it's got to be Ole Miss. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I think there might be a tendency, and I just said it, to kind of overreact to the fact that, whoa, Alabama gave up a lot of rushing yards to Florida. Um, Florida's a really good football team, though. I, I yeah. think. And, and I was high on Florida going into the season. A lot of people were saying, like, oh, they're going to take a step back. Like, no, I, I think Florida is still a really good football team. Ole Miss is the thing where it's like, man, that offense is going to be whew, dynamite. Yeah. But has Ole Miss played a decent offense yet? No. So, I mean, I think even though their defense looks better this season, and I'm sure they're going to be improved by the end of the year, like on a whole, we'll say, yeah, that Ole Miss defense took a step forward. I mean, they had a pretty good offense last year, and Auburn, with all of Auburn's issues on the offensive end, were able to to swing with them in, in Oxford and pull out that win. So at home, yeah. I mean, it's just one of those things, though. It's like 
I don't doubt Auburn has – I mean, Auburn's got talent in the secondary, and their secondary problems to this point are fixable, right? Don't bust coverages. Get better at communicating. Tweak some things. Tighten some things up with the way you way you cover. You'll be fine. Now, Ole Miss will put up points and yards, but they're going to do that against pretty much everybody. They're not nearly as balanced of a team as Alabama is because Alabama is one of the best teams in the country and probably will be the best team in the country this season, although I am feeling pretty good right now and I know I'm saying this on an Auburn podcast, I sure. feel pretty good right now about my pick of saying this probably is going to be the year for Georgia. So they look really, really good right now. Right, right. It's like they both win, and everybody's just sad all the time. <laughs> um, all right, last one, Jay Ferg, and I'll let you go. Oh, uh, Jeremy asked, over under 2,200 yards for Tank and Jarquez. So we talked about they both get 1,000, but could Tank get 1,500 and, and Jarquez get 700 or something like that? 2,200 is... It's a lot. Yeah, but I think most seasons you get over 2,200 yards with your running game. Um, A really good running attack does for Auburn. So, yeah, I could could see that. Maybe the split is a little bit more even between those two guys. We talked about the 2,000-yard backs, but, like, could you get by the end of the year once you get a, once you get a, you know, game, could you get a 1,300 or 900-yard guy or something? Maybe. I don't know. Like, it's, I, I think this Auburn rushing attack has the potential to be, great because they went to Penn State and I know some I know I know there's things like well don't overreact to one game but it's like Penn State's got a really good defensive front they made Wisconsin look not great running the ball on a consistent basis and they have for the last couple of seasons and Auburn went there on the road and said yeah we'll average over four yards carry against you that'll be fine we'll, we'll take that um so I think if if you can have kind of like that matchup proof type of ru- running game You'll be in a good spot. So, yeah. yeah, can they can they do that moving forward is going to be the big thing. But yeah, I, I could see I could see definitely this being one of the better running attacks in the SEC and in the country. And that that yardage goal is pretty gettable, I think. Yeah, shout out to that offensive line. I mean, I, I they they blew me away. The 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 pass protection, like okay, so every time every time Bo Nix gets pressured, it's going to be like Dad gum at the other pass, you know, pass protection can't can't do that. It's like well. Uh-huh. They're college kids, <laughs> you know. Everybody gives up gives up pressures. So I thought I thought they did all right. I think they did great. I think they did yeah. great. Justin, how can people sign up for the Auburn Observer? AuburnObserver.com, six dollars a month or sixty dollars a year. Put your email in there. Everything else goes to your inbox. Awesome, man. Thank you so much for your time. As always, we'll be back on Monday to start talking about LSU week. You can follow me on Twitter at Z Black. We're showing Twitter at Locked On Auburn, and once again, we'll see you Monday right here on Locked On Auburn. <laughs>